Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Cinelog 35, a cinematic oriented 3.5 inch quadcopter by Gepper C. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, give you my feedback after testing it out and show you some flight footage. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box along with the quadcopter you can find plenty of Gepper C stickers a quick start guide and the user manual of the flight controller, a 3D printed TPU part which is used for securing an immortal T antenna, plastic tubes and rubber covers for protecting the antennas of the radio receiver, a screw and a nut which are used for securing the action camera, a spare set of Gemfan D90 propellers in addition to the one which is already pre-installed on the quadcopter, an OSD menu board for the Cadex Retail 2 camera, which is included in case you have the analog version. A spare, high quality, 20cm long Gepper C branded battery Velcro strap. A wrench, hex key, and some spare screws. A Gepper C keychain holder, which is a nice add on. An adapter, which is going to enable you to power a naked GoPro camera using the balance lead of a forest battery spare bottom foam pad and an anti-skid battery sticker, four spare rubber dampers which are used for securing the action camera carbon fiber plate and by the way my unit was shipped with a 20 degrees GoPro Hero 10 action camera mount but I'm pretty sure that if you need one you will need to purchase it separately. In terms of features and specs, the Cinelog 35 is available with multiple radio receiver options and you can choose between analog and digital versions. I've got the analog plug and play version so I had to install my own radio receiver and as far as I know the digital version is bundled with the Cadex Nebula Pro digital transmission system and yes apparently the Nebula Pro is back in stock which is great news. The analog version features the Cadex Retail 2 micro-sized FPB camera and a VTX by Gepper C which has a maximum output power of 600 milliwatts and secured to the bottom plate using 20 by 20 millimeters mounting holes which also secure the Vista unit on the digital version. In addition, the Synalog 35 features the Gepper C GR2004 2550 kV motors which can handle up to forest batteries when pushing these 3.5 inch propellers. The motor wires are secured to the top plate and protected by these plastic parts. On the center of the frame secured to the top plate you can find an all-in-one F7 whoop style 25.5 by 25.5 mm flight controller that features an integrated 35 amperes BLLES 4-in-1 ESC. The 19.5 cm version of the Gepper C Momoda antenna is mounted on the back of the frame using a 3D printed TPU mount which can also secure the antennas of the radio receiver. The battery is mounted on the top plate and connected to the flight controller using an XT30 battery connector which is pre-soldered to a capacitor. The battery Velcro strap can be inserted in different positions and on the front you can find a carbon fiber plate which is secured to the top plate using rubber dampers in order to reduce vibrations and you can either mount an action camera using this molded plastic action camera mount or using a 3D printed TPU mount which I've just shown you earlier you can connect it using screws to the action camera top plate. As for the frame which as far as I know is going to be available separately its wheelbase is 142 millimeters and it features a true X pattern. The thickness of the top unibody carbon fiber plate is 4 millimeters. The thickness of the bottom and action camera plates is 2 millimeters. The frame supports both 20 by 20 and 25.5 by 25.5 millimeter stacks. And the highlight of this frame is of course these massive molded plastic propeller guards. As for its weight, without a battery, the analog version of the Synalog 35 weighs about 225 grams and including this new 1100 mAh Forest LHP battery by Gepper C which is going to provide you well over 7 minutes of flight time including a lightweight action camera, the total weight is about 346 grams. In addition, the weight of the Synalog 35 along with the Firefly x lite like action camera and its mount is 271.1 grams and the total weight including a GoPro Hero 10 and its mount 
is 395.1 grams. In order to set up the Synalog 35, first of all, in case you have the plug and play version, you will need to remove the bottom carbon fiber plate, and for that you will need to unscrew these four hex screws. Then in order to make things a little bit easier for you, you can disconnect the VTX by unplugging the two GST connectors which connect it to the FB camera and to the flight controller, and you'll be able to fully access the flight controller. Out of the box, in case you have the plug and play version, a servo connector is going to be connected to UART1 and the flight controller is going to be pre-configured to use it and the service provider is going to be set to SBUS. So in case you are going to connect an SBUS receiver, you can simply cut the wires and connect them to your own radio receiver. And in case you're using a radio receiver such as Crossfire that needs a full UART port, you will also need to solder the TX1 pad from the flight controller to the radio receiver. Anyway, when installing the radio receiver, I recommend to refer to the user manual of the flight controller in order to avoid making mistakes, and preferably in order to stay on the safe side when powering the quadcopter for the first time, use a smoke stopper device such as the VFly short saver. As for beta flight configuration, most of the settings, including the PID tune, which in my experience work great, are pre-configured for you. So basically, in case you just installed your own radio receiver, make sure that it is configured properly. And just like on the Binance Live version, after binding the radio receiver with your radio controller, make sure that all the sticks and switches are working properly. Then I recommend to define your favorite flight modes and OSD elements. And you should note when installing the propellers that the motor direction is reversed. The damp settings of the Synalog 35 flight controller are included down below, so in case you need to revert to the original settings, you can simply use them. And by the way, you should note that even when the flight controller is powered only via USB, the VTX is going to power up, so make sure not to leave it on the bench for too long, as otherwise it is going to overheat. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Synalog 35. And overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that, in my opinion, this is a great platform for capturing HD footage both indoors and outdoors. First of all, because it is very stable, and the flight footage that I captured with the Firefly X that camera, even without post-processing, was pretty good. And it also features a very powerful but yet efficient setup. When carrying the Firefly x Lite camera, I got about 4.5 minutes of a fast-paced flight using this 1100mAh Forest LHB battery by GNB, which I can estimate is actually a 900mAh LiPo battery, and when using the new Gepper C 1100mAh Forest LHB battery, I got over 7 minutes of flight time in a mixed style flight, so I can estimate that in case you are going to just cruise around, the flight time is going to be closer to 10 minutes. In addition, I haven't tested the Synalog 35 along with the GoPro 10 camera, which is of course heavier than the Firefly x Lite, but I can tell that it is going to be able to carry it without a problem, and I might release another video with the Synalog 35 carrying this camera soon, so in case you are interested, please let me know. As for its downsides, first of all, I hope that Gepper C are going to sell spare parts, because in case you break a part of the frame, you will need to replace it entirely. And one more thing that you should note is that these are not ducts, so the propellers are still partially exposed, so you should be definitely careful in case you are going to fly indoors, and you should avoid flying it next to people. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, so I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell in case you are not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.